and this video we'll talk about the z-score and how it represents the distance between a given measurement x and the mean. It is expressed in standard deviations. The z-score formula for a sample is z equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And notice the population formula uses different symbols, but it is the same calculation. Z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, which is the standard deviation for a population. The interpretation of z scores for mound shaped distributions of data are approximately 68% of measurements will have a z score between negative 1 and positive 1. That means the measurements fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Approximately 95% of the measurements will have a z-score between negative 2 and positive 2. That means the measurements fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Approximately 99.7%, almost all of the measurements, will have a z-score between negative 3 and positive 3. That represents the measurements are falling within three standard deviations of the mean. Let's look at a reference for classwork. Applying z-scores. A brand of automobile tire has a life expectancy that is normally distributed with a mean life of 25,000 miles and a standard deviation of 2,000 miles. The lifespans of three randomly selected tires are 27,000 miles, 22,750 miles, and 25,000 miles. Find the z-score that corresponds to each lifespan. So what we realize from this given information is if the mean life of 25,000 miles is given, that represents, in this case, x-bar, or this sample. So x-bar is equal to 25,000 miles. The standard deviation is given at 2,000 miles. So our s-value will be 2,000. So we will substitute 25,000 for x-bar, and 2,000 for s into the formula. We'll substitute the first mileage given, 27,000, for our x value, minus 25,000, which is the mean, divided by 2,000, which is the standard deviation. So that gives us 2,000 divided by 2,000, or a z-score of 1. This represents within one standard deviation of the mean. But more specifically, since it is a positive 1, that means 27,000 fits within one standard deviation above the mean. Our second example, our x value is 22,750 miles minus the mean divided by 2,000. And that equals negative 1.125. Notice we've got a negative in front of this z-score. That means we are 1.125 standard deviations below the mean or to the left of the mean. In our last example, the mileage or life expectancy of the tires is 25,000. 25,000 minus the mean of 25,000, notice that already makes zero, divided by 2,000. So zero divided by 2,000 will make zero. Now think about what a z-score of zero really represents. Z-score of zero is the mean. We are on the mean. Our next example deals with GPA scores for students. At one university, the students are given z-scores at the end of each semester, rather than the traditional GPAs. The mean, mu, and standard deviation, sigma, of all student cumulative GPAs on which the z-scores are based are 2.5 and 0.3 respectively. Notice now we are using a population mean of mu and a population standard deviation sigma. So mu represents the mean value of 2.5 and sigma is our standard deviation, 0.3. We will use these to substitute into the z-score formula for population. So mu will be the mean and sigma represents the standard deviation. So we have four different z-scores given. The first z-score is 2. So be careful where you're substituting this value. It is the z-score. So notice 2 replaces z in the formula. 
So we have 2 is equal to x minus 2.5 divided by 0.3. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 0.3, we can eliminate the fraction to get 0.6 is equal to x minus 2.5. Adding 2.5 to both sides of the equation will result in our final answer, which is 3.1 GPA. So when I'm adding 0.6 to 0.25, I get 3.1. It is positive, so that tells us that the students needed 3.1 GPA. For the second example, our Z score is negative 1. So that is one standard deviation below the mean. Substituting negative 1 for Z equals X minus 2.5 all divided by 3. Again, to clear the fraction, we can use our denominator of 0.3 as our common denominator to multiply both sides of the equation by 0.3. This result is negative 0.3 is now equal to x minus 2.5. To get x alone, we would add 2.5 to both sides of the equation. So we would have 2.5 minus 0.3, and that makes positive 2.2 for the GPA score. In example 3, our z score is now positive 0.5. That is one half standard deviation above the mean. Here is our substitution. 0.5 is equal to x minus 2.5 divided by 0.3. We clear the fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by 0.3. So 0.3 times 0.5 would make 0.15 is equal to x minus 2.5. Adding 2.5 to both sides of the equation, we have positive 0.15 and positive 2.5, and that makes positive 2.65 GPA. For our last example, we're given the z-score of a negative 2.5, which means we are two and a half standard deviations below the mean. So we're substituting negative 2.5 for the z-score. Again, we have a fraction, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 0.3 to eliminate our fraction. And that makes 0.3 times the negative 2.5, that is negative 0.75, equal to x minus 2.5. Adding 2.5 to each side results in 1.75 GPA. The next part of the question is talking about z-scores below negative 1.6. Any students scoring below negative 1.6 are put on probation. What is the corresponding probationary GPA? So think about what we're actually given here. Negative 1.6 is the z-score. So z is replaced with negative 1.6 in our formula. So we have negative 1.6 is equal to x minus 2.5 divided by 3. Again, multiply each side of the equation by 0.3. That will clear the fraction. So 0.3 times the negative 1.6 is negative 0.48, and that equals x minus 2.5. Add 2.5 two to each side, and the result is 2.02 .02 GPA. So that means if a student scores below negative 1.6, the GPA would be below 2.02. .02. So we use an inequality. The final part of this question deals with the president of the university wishing to graduate the top 16% of students with cum laude honors and the top 2.5% with summa cum laude honors where approximately should the limits be set in terms of z-scores, in terms of GPA, and are we making any assumptions about the curve itself? So we will assume that the distribution of GPAs is approximately mound-shaped, and we are using the empirical rule. So from there, we have our curve drawn already, and we can label mu as 0, which represents the mean, 1 is one standard deviation from the mean, positive 2 for two standard deviations from the mean, and finally 3 for three standard deviations above the mean. So using the empirical rule, 2.5% would be again at two standard deviations and to the right. 
So we need above two standard deviations. That would be a z greater than 2. Looking at the GPA scores, that means students would need to have a GPA above 3.1. For the top 16%, according to the empirical rule, that would be from one standard deviation and above. So we actually need to be above one standard deviation, not right on that. So that's where z greater than 1 comes from, and the corresponding GPA score is 2.8. So that means the GPA must be greater than 2.8 to receive that summa cum laude honors. You may be wondering, where do these numbers come from? 2.5 was given in Part B of this question. We were told that the mean is 2.5 and that the standard deviation is 0.3. So by adding 0.3 to the mean, we come up with 2.8. Adding the standard deviation again, we end up with 3.1. Finally, adding the standard deviation a third time brings us to 3.4. For the numbers or these GPAs to the left of the mean, we are subtracting 0.3 from the mean, and that's where 2.2 comes from. Subtract 0.3 again to get 1.9. Subtract 0.3 again you end up with 1.6. So by using the empirical rule, we can draw the curve, we can label the curve with the possible GPA scores, and then use the empirical rule and what percent of the data falls within each of these standard deviations to answer the question about what percent of the data would fall 2.5% above the mean and 16% above the mean.